Son Goku. He's Defender of the Innocent, the Light in the Darkness, and apparently Truth. He's the ally to good and a nightmare to all those who oppose him. Having followed his journey from boyhood through his teens far into adulthood today, Goku has faced a plethora of the anime industry's most iconic villains. He is without a doubt a mascot for the industry as well as Japan as a country. But that's not the last feather in Goku's cap either. He is also Universe 7's strongest fighter. But how strong is he? And is there a way to find out? Well, that's what we're here to find out today. Using as much official reference as I can muster together, I will try and find out just how strong Son Goku is. He's our main man G that dons the orange gi. I'm totally not Mark, and this is the Power Level Series. Episode 7, Son Goku. Boo's turn too? Yes, Boo, it's your turn today too. <laughs> Boo, happy now! Son Goku is a member of the warrior race known as Saiyans. He is 40 years old when you take into account the time he has spent dead and the time he has spent in the hyperbolic time chamber. His techniques and transformations include the Kaioken, Spirit Bomb, Kamehameha, Instant Transmission, Super Saiyan 1 to 3, and Super Saiyan Blue. There are 11 officially stated power levels for Goku, those being 10, 180, 260, 910, 334, 416, 924, over 8,000, 180,000, 3 million and 150 million. Our journey with this entry begins with episode 1 of Dragon Ball Z, where we are reintroduced to our main character Goku as he visits Kame House accompanied by his firstborn child, son Gohan. With that first episode, those that watched Dragon Ball prior were hit by a bombshell that opened up the entire universe to our cast of characters. Goku was an alien, a member of a near extinct warrior race known as Saiyans. This exposition was presented to Goku by his brother Raditz. He explained that Goku, when he initially arrived on planet Earth, was supposed to have laid waste to the planet so that they could sell it later. Raditz, however, notices that Goku has not done his job, and so kidnaps his son in the hopes that it would persuade Goku to join him in other planet piracy missions. Naturally, this is not an option for Goku, and for the first time in the series, requests the help of longtime enemy Piccolo. Once both Goku and Piccolo land on the battlefield to confront Raditz, we learn of their respective power levels, weighted and unweighted. Weighted Goku at this time has a power level of 334. However, as stated above, this is just his restrained power level. Once unencumbered by his weighted clothing, Goku's power shoots up to 416. At this level of power, Goku is still no match for Raditz, who at this time has a battle power of 1,500, more than enough for both of them. However, thanks to some special tricks from Piccolo, Gohan's blindsided attack, and the ultimate sacrifice from Goku, Raditz was defeated, left to die on the open fields of Earth. Raditz as a character existed purely for exposition and to act as a means to connect Goku to the rest of the universe. While weak comparatively to the fighters that would come, when we first met him, he was an imposing force and most importantly gave us our first official reference for power levels in this series, using these new devices known as Scouters. And with this Scouter, Raditz forgoes the necessary information to both Nappa and Vegeta who now desire to use the Earth's Dragon Balls to wish for their own immortality. Between the events of the Raditz Saga and the Saiyan Invasion one year later, Goku dies on the battlefield alongside his brother, and thanks to his heroic efforts in defense of his planet on numerous occasions, he was granted the use of his body to travel to the legendary King Kai's planet. But first, he has to traverse the seemingly unending Snake Way. Taking that the Saiyans were to arrive one year later as literal as possible, that would mean if King Kai's estimate that Goku had around 158 days worth of training until the Saiyan invasion was correct, that would mean that Goku travels Snake Way in about 207 days. That's a long run. Goku initially frets as to whether or not that's enough time to train, to which King Kai assures that it is, saying that 158 days of training here is worth thousands of years on Earth. So during this time period, Goku trains intensely on King Kai's planet, learning the Spirit Bomb and the Kaioken techniques, moves that would prove to be invaluable for the remainder of his life to date. But that's not all. He also increases his power enormously in that time, from a one-time max of 416 to over 8,000. This is revealed to us by Vegeta, who informs Nappa of Goku's power level. As you all know, Goku goes on to break Nappa's back when he decides to attack Gohan. It's a pretty awesome shot actually, which leads to her introduction to Vegeta's more ruthless and merciless nature, literally blasting his longtime companion to pieces. What follows is one of the most iconic standoffs in anime history, the lower class commoner facing off against the super elite prince. Vegeta at this time in the series has an officially stated power level of 18,000 when going all out, again completely outclassing Goku's current maximum output of just over 8,000. However, thanks to King Kai's tutelage, Goku has mastered a move that vastly improves his power and speed output in short bursts. 
the Kaioken technique. Using an ill-advised times 3 boost, Goku is able to gain control of the fight, boosting his power to 24,000 when using the Kaioken times 3. It's worth noting here that seeing as Goku required to use the Kaioken times 4, Vegeta's Gattaca gun must output somewhere in the region of 24,000 in power. In that instance, using the times 4 Kaioken multiplier, Goku's power explodes to 32,000. Easily overpowering Vegeta's best efforts, this is the first of many occasions Goku truly humbles the Saiyan Prince. Vegeta, infuriated with what is transpiring, pulls out his trump card, his last resort, his Ozaru form. Fun fact, Vegeta's Ozaru form has a power level of 180,000 when you take into account it has a base multiplier of times 10. If Goku was to outmatch that Ozaru, he would need a Kaioken multiplier of at least times 23, which is a higher multiplier than Goku has attempted in any part of the series' long history. Probably for good reason too. The events of this fight are well documented throughout the community. Nothing else of note occurs during the rest of this battle as it pertains to Goku's strength. Once Vegeta is defeated by the forces of Earth, Goku is transported to a hospital where he pretty much waits for a sensu bean from Korin. Once the sensu bean is consumed, Goku breaks from his bandages and makes a beeline for planet Namek. And this is where things get a little absurd, or at least I think they do anyway. This highlights how truly impossible it is to predict how strong a character would be when official reference isn't available. Goku, while using the gravity chamber spaceship designed by Bulma's father, travels to planet Namek. Now, there is no way to infer how strong Goku became right after he ate that sensu bean. There is no means to measure a Zenkai for him at this point. However, we do know that in the past, Goku has increased in strength once recovered from battle. From his battle power of 8,000 facing Vegeta to when he arrives on planet Namek, his base power increases to 90,000, which is even more incredible when you take into account that the trip to Namek was only six days. This all means that from the Zenkai after Vegeta's fight and the training on his way to Namek, Goku increased his power just over 11 times, which is more than King Kai's training did for him in 158 days. And that was with the tutelage of someone who was stronger than him. On the six days to Namek, he trained in solitude. But I suppose we'll have to mark it down to the gravity chamber training he did on his way to Namek. We have to. Once he arrives on the planet, Goku demonstrates that he can easily boost his power significantly higher than Captain Ginyu using the Kaioken technique. In this particular scene, he increases it to 180,000, far exceeding Captain Ginyu's current max output of 120,000. Antics ensue which lead to Goku no longer having his body, and then getting his body back only severely injured. This is an interesting way to take Goku out of commission for a while, without him technically losing any credibility as a fighter. I mean, if you think about it, Goku didn't lose a single fight on Namek. This creates anticipation for when Goku, the only main character to never having been defeated on Namek, finally comes face to face with the series' big bad, Lord Frieza. Once Goku arrives on the battlefield to confront him, every other character has been put through hell by this monster. Gohan, Krillin, and Piccolo have all had to come back from the brink of death. And unfortunately, once Goku arrives, Frieza delivers the final blow to the Saiyan Prince, marking Vegeta's first death in the series. Standing before Frieza, Goku has an officially stated power level of 3 million at this time, which means the Zenkai he received from the rejuvenation tank was a multiplier of almost 34 times, thus blowing his already preposterous training results from his trip to Namek out of the water by simply sitting there and healing. Things quickly take a turn for the worse for Goku as he is brutally outmatched by Frieza's most minute efforts, forcing him to throw caution to the wind using the Kaioken with a multiplier of times 20, causing his power to skyrocket to that of 60 million or 50% of Frieza's full power. However, this was all in a failing effort. Feeling desperate, Goku goes for his last resort move, the Spirit Bomb, which incredibly, Frieza survives. And not only that, once emerging from the crater of Goku's creation, with a single blast brings Piccolo to the brink of death and blows up Goku's longtime friend and companion, Krillin. This causes him to tip over the edge in anger and rage, leading to possibly the most iconic moment in all of anime history, Goku's fulfillment of an ancient alien prophecy, transforming into the legendary Super Saiyan. And thanks to the official guidebooks, we know that the Super Saiyan multiplier is times 50, bringing Goku up to 150 million when fighting full-powered Frieza on the doomed Namekian world. It's important to mention at this point that any power level I mentioned prior to this was supplied by official resources. From here on in, I will be going off the beaten trail, trying to determine what his power level could be using as many references to the original material and creator I can find. That's right, it's time for some good old-fashioned mental gymnastics!
In previous videos, I've discussed why it's possible that Trunks could in fact be stronger than Goku was after he initially transformed into a Super Saiyan on Namek. My reasons ranged from him being better practiced in the form, and that he was facing a more powerful Frieza now that he had mechanical enhancements. So I settled on a figure of 175 million plus for Trunks. Once Goku lands, Trunks requests to speak with him in private. There, he decides to test Goku's strength. After some brief swordplay with Goku, Trunks is really impressed. So if at the very least one must admit that Goku is now stronger having spent a year healing which in and of itself incurs a Zenkai boost. However, alongside that it's also very likely he trained and perhaps increased his base power level, thus yielding a higher power output once the times 50 Super Saiyan multiplier was applied. Long story short, Goku is stronger than Trunks in this scene, and Trunks had just easily taken out a more fearsome Frieza. It seems reasonable to think Goku might have a power level of at least 200 million as a Super Saiyan around this time. To reach such a level would require a base power level of around 4 million, and I don't think it's a difficult leap to suggest he managed to improve 33% in one year, having been 3 million in base form when he fought Frieza last. On top of that, considering in the case of Vegeta, Zenkai boosts usually range on average from 25 to 33%. Assuming that he is at least this strong now seems like a fair leap. It's important to take into account also that Goku during this year spent a certain amount of time healing and perfecting the instant transmission technique. After training for three years with much weaker partners like Gohan and Piccolo, Goku makes his way to the battlefield to confront the androids. At this point in Goku's story, his level is very hard to pin down. Suffering from the heart virus has its setbacks on my end too it seems. Clearly before Goku is even fighting he is feeling the effects of the virus losing breath from exertions that would otherwise never have bothered him. This has a direct effect on his power level and as a result isn't fighting as strong as he would if he were healthy. This is evident due to fighters like Piccolo being able to easily take care of Android 20. Piccolo's strength at this point has been likened to that of a Super Saiyan if you remember. So with Goku fighting hurt it's impossible to infer what his level is here. Earlier we agreed that Vegeta came back with a power level of around 300 million in a losing effort against Android 18. The below statement is a clear indicator that when he is healthy Goku is well above 200 million but less than or equal to 300 million. A quote from Gohan during his training with his father in the time chamber reveals that training with someone who is substantially weaker than your max does slow down the stronger person's progression and improvement. So saying that Goku while training with weaker opponents increased by maybe 50% is as close an estimate I could find given the limited amount of information that I have. Once recovered from the heart virus, Goku's next major increase comes from the time chamber with Gohan. When inside, both Gohan and Goku achieve full mastery of the Super Saiyan form, otherwise known as full powered Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan Grade 4, surpassing both Trunks and Vegeta's efforts in the chamber. Goku powering up to half around this time is enough to throw Vegeta into a rage, spouting about how Kakarot can continually widen the gap between them. This means that Goku, while using half of his current power, can surpass Vegeta's max output. In this newly acquired Super Saiyan Grade 4 form, Goku must have a full power level somewhere in the region of 2.5 billion give or take, seeing as we have already established that Vegeta at this time has a power level in the region of 1.25 billion. We have discussed both Gohan and Vegeta at length during this period also. The advantage of doing so makes placing Goku relatively easy. He is at this point between Vegeta and Gohan, but much closer to Gohan's strength when in Super Saiyan Grade 4. And with that out of the way, Goku doesn't get any more noteworthy power-ups for the rest of the arc until the Buu Saga comes around, which means there is a 7 year time skip. As I previously explained in my last video regarding Vegeta, Vegeta when he had his power unlocked by Bobbidi, had a power that could have been higher than Gohan when he was facing Cell, which we have already established as being 5 billion from my last Gohan video. Using this we can infer that Vegeta around this time is in the neighborhood of 5.5 billion, give or take. In order for us to move forward, let's assume that Goku was using the Super Saiyan 2 transformation to his full potential when fighting Vegeta, which would place them pretty evenly in that form, both fighting with a power level in the range of 5.5 to 6 billion. Fun fact, Goku has never defeated Vegeta in a one-on-one -on -one fight on screen. In the series to date, Goku has fought his longtime rival on two separate occasions, not including sparring and training sessions. The first being during the Saiyan invasion of Earth, which if the other Z fighters didn't intervene, would have surely meant Goku's death at the hands of a Vegeta in his Ozaru form. The second during the Buu Saga. Granted, Goku was holding back the vast majority of his power, but that's his fault and Vegeta beat him with the hey look over there move combined with a clubbing blow to the back of the head. So let's assume Goku is in the region of 5.5 billion around this time period in his Super Saiyan 2 form. Therefore, if we apply the times 4 multiplier of the Super Saiyan 3 onto his Super Saiyan 2 form, Goku's full power skyrockets to 22 billion. And with that, I think it's time for... Yes, Boo, it's, it's your turn. Goku, take five. It's time for a quick breakdown of the mysterious Majin Buu. Majin Buu is a 
Majin, not sure if that's a race, and is approximately 5 million years old. His techniques include the chocolate beam, body manipulation and regeneration, Majin Kamehameha, and healing. And there are no officially stated power levels for Majin Buu. This is gonna be good. While there are many iterations of Majin Buu throughout this saga, I will be focusing on the ones that pertain specifically to the fat good Buu that we ultimately get in Dragon Ball Super, those being the innocent Buu we get initially and the good Buu that Kid Buu purges from his system. So let's begin with Innocent Buu. The history of Innocent Buu is long and convoluted, but I will try to keep it as concise as I can. Over 5 million years ago, the evil wizard Bibbidi, Bobbidi's father, created a destructive entity void of reason or emotion called Boo. He lived to only destroy and slaughter other life forms, which led to the destruction of hundreds of worlds during that time. However, the Kais saw to his containment, and so he was contained for 5 million years. However, because of Goku and Vegeta's fighting, enough energy was collected to open the seal and release the innocent Majin Buu. On a number of occasions, various fighters are duped by Majin Buu's power thinking that he's less than he actually is. However, before Buu suddenly became two separate entities, Goku, referring to the innocent Buu, suggested that he might have been able to beat him. There are a ton of quotes to consider, I'll flash them on screen for anyone that wants to read them in their own time, but the general gist of it is, Majin Buu isn't an ordinary opponent and that his power level is almost like a lie. Before Buu split into the good and evil, Super Saiyan 3 Goku was perhaps a little stronger. However, Goku knows that his key can be deceiving. So if we were to lowball the innocent Majin Buu that initially came from the sealed pod, his power must be up in the region of 22 billion with Super Saiyan 3 Goku. However, it should be noted that Majin Buu's power can fluctuate hugely depending on his temperament and mood. For the sake of finding a general figure, let's take 22 billion as the average. Alright, so time for a breakdown of what happens with Majin Buu. <sighs> Innocent Boo splits into Good Boo and Evil Boo, gets absorbed by Evil Boo and becomes Super Boo. And then there's lots of Boos. Time passes and Kid Boo or Pure Boo purges himself of the Good Boo. Do you get all that? No? Well, let me go back and cover the only part that's important. When Majin Buu split into two, it created a good Buu and an evil Buu. The evil Buu received majority of the power, though both are not as strong as the combined innocent Buu was prior. The only estimate I have to go off of in terms of power scaling for the combined innocent Buu was that he was perhaps around the same strength as Super Saiyan 3 Goku. The good Buu is what we are concerned with here today, so given that he was able to fight with him for a little while, it's fair to assume that he didn't get completely outdone in the power department. I'll be generous and give him 40% of the combined power. We already established that Super Saiyan 3 would be in the region of 22 billion at this time, and so 40% of that is 8.8 .8 billion. Also at that time, the evil Majin Buu, or the Grey Buu, had the remainder of the power, which means that he must have had a power of 13.2 billion, receiving the remainder of the innocent Buu's power. Once absorbed by the evil Grey Buu, they become Super Buu, who because of his body type is a more adept fighter and therefore more dangerous than the prior innocent Buu incarnation. The good Buu has a few more good showings throughout the rest of the arc, but none which alter his power. From the beginning of Super up until the end of the future Trunks arc, Boo is seen eating, getting owned by Beerus, and failing an exam. There was, however, an instance that came about during my writing for this episode. Majin Buu was seen to be training, two hours worth of it to be exact, and in those two hours, according to Goku, improved greatly remarking on his speed among other things. However, there wasn't enough information to go off of to derive an estimated figure. Or at least I don't think there was. Only time will reveal how strong our pink genie friend is in truth, really. And so, knowing this, I will put Majin Buu significantly greater than 8.8 .8 billion, so I'll leave a plus next to the figure. Majin Buu is a being of magic, which makes measuring his power an almost impossibility in many respects. It seems to waver on his mood as well as his motivation. That said, with his unique moveset, I am very excited to see what this little pink blob brings to the tournament. Now, back to Goku! Before I get on to Super, I want to address a particular quote by one Akira Toriyama when referring to the Battle of Gods movie in 2013. It reads, I suppose if Beerus' strength is a 10, Super Saiyan God would be right about a 6. Only Saiyans rapidly increase in strength as they fight against strong opponents. So the longer they fought, the more the gap would shrink, and it might even be possible for them to eventually turn the tables. Incidentally, I guess Whis would be about a 15. However, in that very same interview, moments later, he was asked about the future of the series, to which he replied, to be honest, I haven't given it any thought at all. The 6, 10, 15 power scaling was quoted by Toriyama when he had no plans of the series ever continuing. Bear in mind, this was long before Dragon Ball Super's first episode. Almost two years before, in fact. Therefore, in my opinion, to take this into consideration would be a falsehood as it comes from a time where Toriyama wasn't considering anything other than a movie. Now, back to Super. Firstly, regarding the resurrection of F-Arc. A point of fierce contention is of when Goku fights a new and improved 4th form Frieza in his base form and wins on top of that. However, while scaling this encounter is a near impossibility due to Frieza's insane power increase, 
There is a reason that exists as to why Goku can fight Frieza in that form. The theory goes as follows. After Goku attained the Super Saiyan God transformation through ritual, he fought Beerus intensely. However, the God form had a time limit causing the form to fade. Having faded, Goku retained all the strength from the Super Saiyan God form and absorbed it into his base. Therefore, seeing as the resurrection of F Arc takes place after the events of Battle of Gods, it's fair to assume that Goku, while fighting Frieza, was using his God essence that he absorbed during the battle with Beerus. God power is still very much up in the air as to how it works exactly. In my last episode detailing Vegeta's life, I explained my process in detail as to how I came up with Lord Beerus's ever-rising power level, while also explaining that Beerus is as strong as the series allows, and that there are currently no plans for Goku and Vegeta to surpass Beerus and Whis. Or at least that is my knowledge as of right now. So if you'd like to see how I derived an estimate for Beerus's full power level, go check out my last video about Vegeta. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Alrighty, and so with that out of the way, Beerus I estimated as being in the region of 245 quintillion, and that Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta after the Future Trunks arc was around 8% of Beerus's total power. But before we use that, let's take a look at INSTANCES WHERE GOKU'S POWER INCREASED! After absorbing the Super Saiyan God power, training with Vegeta under Whis, three years in the hyperbolic time chamber with Vegeta, more training with Whis. Seeing as Vegeta's Super Saiyan Blue form was stronger than Goku's towards the end of the future Trunks arc, I will put Goku at 6% of Beerus, which is smaller than the 8% that Vegeta has in his Super Saiyan Blue form, giving Goku a power level in the region of 14.7 quintillion when in his Super Saiyan Blue form at the end of the future Trunks arc. However, and this is a big however, because Goku was able to combine the efforts of the Super Saiyan Blue form with the Kaioken, he is capable of pushing his power far beyond his regular limits. The most dramatic of which took place during the tournament between Universe 6 and Universe 7, where Goku, while fighting against Hit, used a Kaioken multiplier of times 10 in his Super Saiyan Blue state, resulting in enormous power. But before we look at doing basic multiplication, we need to figure out whether or not Goku has improved since the end of the Future Trunks arc. He is seen doing actual work towards the beginning of the Universe Survival arc, and along with that, it's even implied that he's gotten rusty. However, a little later in that arc, Goku is seen to be training with Whis, deflecting a blast from him while in his regular Super Saiyan state. Now, what's important to note regarding this scene? We have never seen Goku take a blast from Whis before, we do not know how much Whis is trying, and we do not know if any substantial amount of time has passed. So taking that into account, I'll increase him slightly to an even 15 quintillion. With that, while using the Kaioken times 10, his power would shoot up to 150 quintillion. And that's pretty much Goku. The Dragon Ball series as a whole can mean many different things to a lot of different people. For some it can be escapism, I know a lot of people use it as inspiration, and most use it simply as something you can just sit down every week and enjoy. And that's the key right there, it's something to enjoy. Akira Toriyama didn't have a grand plan for the story, he rarely had anything planned at all, improvising from issue to issue a lot of the time. Dragon Ball has never pretended to be anything that it isn't, and it was never about the details or the finer points. It's about a young boy who through many adventures and fierce battles gains companionship and strength into his adult life. It's there to make people laugh, and to get you to cheer on your favourite characters when they're in the heat of battle. Nothing more. About two months ago, when I began creating this series, I never imagined it would get so much attention. This was just a fun excuse for me to sit down and retell the story of Dragon Ball from the perspective of my favourite characters. It's really fun to look back at these moments while trying to piece together using logic when answers simply aren't there at all. So in saying that, these are by no means official power ratings. And judging by how unpredictable the series is, I don't think it's possible to derive any accurate power ratings from this story. But that was never the point. I had an absolute blast navigating the Dragon Ball timeline with you guys. But before I go, I would like to ask you what you think I missed in this series. How strong do you think all the fighters are going to be once the tournament comes around? With all that said, I hope you enjoyed these short videos I've been working on these past two months. I would like to thank anyone who contributed by sharing, commenting, and liking this series. I've been Totally Not Mark, and as always, thank you so much for watching.